Hello everyone and welcome to a new reading vlog. So I'm actually kicking off this video on a really good note because I have actually started a book today and I'm already about halfway through. Please ignore Kiwi chewing something in the background, I will have to get that off her in a second. But I have started The Murder on the Links by Agatha Christie, which is the second book in the Poirot murder mystery novels. I don't know how well you can see that, but I do have around an hour and a half left of the audiobook to listen to. So the original audiobook is six hours, but because I listen at two times the speed, it cuts it down to obviously half the time, which is three hours. So I've managed to listen to an hour and a half today. I took Huey for a walk after work and I did listen to it on my drive from work as well. So I'm definitely having a good start to the week and honestly I'm gonna be really optimistic and say that I might even finish this tonight you guys because I do actually have a lot of meal prepping that I want to do in a minute and I think that I will pop some headphones in and just listen to this audiobook because I'm really really enjoying this one so far. In case you haven't gathered it is a murder mystery novel. So in this one we of course have Detective Hercule Poirot and we also have his trusty friend Captain Hastings and at the start of this novel Poirot is a bit down. He has has just solved a murder mystery that seemed to be very complex and so he's wanting to have that same feeling that he did whilst he was on that case however the cases that he's been given aren't really that interesting that is until a letter arrives from a Mr Reynolds which essentially states that he thinks that he is in danger and that Poirot needs to come over to his villa in France as soon as possible to try and help him. Poirot's eyes kind of light up as he is reading this letter and he decides to go to France straight away. However, when he gets there, he is told that Mr. Reynolds has just been found murdered. And so this, of course, kickstarts Poirot's next case as he investigates what actually happened. Now, I do remember a little bit of this plot just because I have watched the ITV adaptation. I remember one plot point, but I can't remember who the actual murderer is. So that is still to come and I feel like I am gonna be surprised by it, hopefully at least. But I do know know the kind of twist that is involved in this novel which doesn't really put me off at all. I kind of figured it out as I was listening. I was like wait surely this was what happened in that thing that I watched and then yeah it all kind of clicked into place and I do remember one element of it but of course as with every Agatha Christie murder mystery there are so many complex details and characters so it's definitely still a guessing game as to who committed the murder and why but as you can tell I'm really really enjoying this one so far. I did decide to just jump straight into another Poirot book because I had such a good time reading the first one. I wanted to feel the same and this is definitely hitting the spot for me right now and I'm having a really good time listening to it. So very glad that I did decide to go ahead and start the next Poirot book. But in terms of physically reading, I haven't actually started a book yet but what I am planning on picking up is Five Survive by Holly Jackson. Please ignore Kiwi, she's having the zoomies right now now, but look at these spread edges you guys, they are so cool. They obviously look like the crime scene tapes and yeah, I am absolutely obsessed. And whereas the Poirot murder mystery is a bit of a slower, more complex mystery, I'm hoping that this book is going to be a more fast paced thriller type of book, which will hopefully make me want to sit down and physically read it. You guys know that recently I have been struggling to physically read books. It's much easier for me at the minute to listen to audiobooks because I am quite busy. For example, I have done 16,421 steps today and I haven't finished doing a lot of things that I need to do. So yeah, I'm a very busy person right now. And so finding the time to sit down and read is is difficult for me. So I definitely want something that will keep my interest. Holly Jackson is an author that I've read from before. I absolutely love the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series by her. It's one of my favourite series of all time. It is another YA murder mystery series by her and so I definitely have high hopes for this one. The fact that it's a standalone as well I feel like will be a nice change because the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series is three books long and it also has a little world book day book to go with it as well and I feel like that just took up so much of my time which I'm obviously not mad about but I think with this one I can just sit down read the book and then there's nothing that I need to wait for it's all in here Kiwi has just knocked over a book silly sausage <laughs> look at her what are you doing <laughs> 
she wanted to join in the vlog you guys she was saying you haven't been giving me attention recently mum and I want to be in your video so there you go Kiwi everyone loved you in my book unhaul by the way so yeah <laughs> Here's the Kiwi content for you. But moving on, in this book, we follow a group of six friends who decide to go on a road trip together. However, when their RV breaks down in the middle of nowhere, they soon realize that this was no accident. Someone wants to kill one of them and it's up to these friends to figure out who and to obviously try and figure out a way to get themselves out of there. And it just says here, buried secrets will be forced to light and tensions inside the RV will reach deadly levels. Not all of them will survive the night. A road trip turns deadly in this heart-pounding, addictive YA thriller from the multi-million best-selling author of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. That is exactly what I need right now, that is exactly what I'm in the mood for, and I really do think that this is going to be a five-star read, at least I desperately hope it's going to be because otherwise I'm going to be so, so disappointed. But Holly Jackson, as I mentioned, is an author that I've read from before, I would consider her a favourite author, especially now if I love this book. And yeah, to be honest, I need a YA thriller in my life right now. I love picking them up when I do feel a bit slumpy, just because I get sucked into them straight away and I tend to finish them quite quickly as well. So yes, this is going to be my physical read. Not sure if I'll sit down to read it tonight. I really do want to set some sort of challenge where I read 30 or 50 pages a day. I think that would definitely help me pick up a book, but I'm not sure if I want to put that pressure on myself just yet. So we'll see, I might do in a minute if I have some time, but as I mentioned, I need to go and meal prep my meals for this week now. And then I'm either gonna have a bath or a shower and I fancy watching a, another Poirot ITV episode as well because yeah, I'm in my Poirot face right now and it would be really cool actually if I'd be able to finish The Murder on the Links and then watch the ITV adaptation because from what I remember it's a really good one and yeah, that's what I did with The Mysterious Affair at Styles last week. So that would be really cool if I could. Not holding myself to it though because yeah, as I mentioned I'm busy and things can change if other things take more time but that is the plan and hopefully it'll set us up for a good read week but for now I am going to stop talking this was only meant to be a quick little update I've been talking for 15 minutes which again is not great so I'm going to wrap this up here and I'll chat to you guys once I've read some more of these books You'll be pleased to hear that I do actually have some reading updates for you guys, but before I get into those, I am actually going to unbox a parcel. Now, as you can tell, this one is from Waterstones, and I do know what it is. It should be the second ninth house book, which I believe is called Hellbent. Apologies if you can see or hear Kiwi in these shots. She's being... A little bit of a menace today but let's see if I can open this because I always struggle opening waterstone packages. Oh there we go she enjoyed that right you can chew on that for a sec. So for those of you who don't know I actually read Ninth House for the first time a few weeks ago I can't quite remember when but it was in December and I've had this book pre-ordered ever since it was announced and as you can tell it is finally out. I really did enjoy Ninth House I think I gave it four stars maybe even a little bit higher and I'm really excited to dive straight into this one. I will say my copy is a little bit damaged I don't know how well you'll be able to see but I'm not too, too bothered. It should be fine once it actually gets put on my shelves. But let's see. 
look at that you guys can you see these end pages wow they are so pretty even kiwi is loving them <laughs> that is beautiful and yes we have the stunning spine hopefully you'll be able to see this it is just wanting to focus on my face for a minute though but if i put it in front of me maybe that will look a bit better i'm not too sure i think this is the best we're gonna get so i'm really sorry about that but you can see that it has stunning red foiling on the spine and I actually take the covers of my Lee Bardugo books off and display them naked because the spines are just gorgeous. What colour was Ninth House? Oh, I haven't actually taken that one off. That is the only book that I've kept with the dust jacket for some reason. But I have Language of Thorns, Shadow and Bone, Six of Crows, Crooked Kingdom, King of Scars and Rule of Wolves all naked just so you can see the beautiful spine. So this is gonna go on that shelf somewhere but it's a little bit full right now so I'm gonna have to work that one out but for those of you who don't know this is a dark academia duology I want to say I could be wrong but from what I know it is a duology and it's essentially a dark academia book which involves a lot of supernatural elements and some murders as well as I mentioned really enjoyed the first book and I definitely think that this one is going to be very interesting hopefully a lot of stuff will be explained and revealed but I'm not quite sure what to expect other than that because I feel like the first book wrapped up pretty nicely it could be a standalone book and so yeah I'm excited to see what happens in this one and how Lee Bardugo is going to continue on with this story. Moving on to the books that I've been reading though, I am very happy to report that I've actually finished The Murder on the Links by Agatha Christie. I think I'm going to give this one either a 3.5 or a 4 star. I really did enjoy it. I remembered a few details here and there, but I just think that overall this book kind of lost me a little bit and I feel like I was a bit too confused because of that. Some things I got and some things, yeah, just weren't really exp I don't want to say explained properly because I think it is just an issue with me, but I didn't quite get what was going on with different characters at certain points, and I think that that then had me a bit too confused, and when everything was revealed I was just a bit like, oh, oh, what? Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I think this was a really good plot. It's just that, as I mentioned, I was just a bit confused throughout this and I had to re-listen to the big reveal at the end just to make sure that I did actually catch on to what was going on. So a solid mystery might be a bit confusing, might just be me, but I'm very happy that I read this and I have actually moved on to the next Poirot book, which is Poirot Investigates. Now, I didn't realise diving into this one that this is a collection of short stories. I only found that out when the first story abruptly ended whilst I was listening to it on my drive from work. So it just says here, first there was the mystery of the film star and the diamond, then came the suicide that was murder, the mystery of the absurdly cheap flat, a suspicious death in a locked gun room, a million dollar bond robbery, the curse of a pharaoh's tomb, a jewel robbery by the sea, the abduction of a prime minister, the disappearance of a banker, a phone call from a dying man, and the mystery of the missing will. What links these fascinating cases? Only the brilliant deductive powers of Hercule Poirot. So if you guys have been following me for a while, you'll know that I'm not the biggest fan of short stories. And so far that has definitely been the case with this one as well. I do just want to say that the first short story in this does have a lot of derogatory language towards a certain race. And so as I was listening to that, it really did um, me and I felt quite uncomfortable actually consuming that story because there were a lot of really racist terms. There were a few jokes I think that were made and a few passing comments that just didn't sit well with me and I know that this book was written years and years ago but it really hasn't aged well and yeah I just found a lot of what was going on quite offensive and so I really didn't like that story and I just feel like it really didn't need to be included in this book really considering that this has been reprinted quite recently so I will just warn you that this book does have some derogatory language and racist terms towards Chinese people. I wouldn't recommend reading that story. I felt uncomfortable reading 
including it. I just didn't think that it was necessary to be included at all, to be honest with you guys. So that has definitely started me off on a bad note. I will say none of the rest of the stories have had any racist comments or things like that, but it was quite heavily mentioned in the first story. Because of that, I did almost give up with this one, but because I was driving home, I did go on to listen to the second story and I did enjoy that a lot more. I am up to the curse of a pharaoh's tomb story i don't quite know what it's called i don't actually know where i am either because as i mentioned i am listening to the audiobook but apparently i think at least i have made it to page 98 because the chapter heading reads the adventure of the egyptian tomb so i think i'm about halfway through the stories now actually i'm just trying to look at how many pages there are without spoiling myself there are 213 pages so yeah i'm around the halfway mark some stories i've enjoyed more than others i'm trying not to let my personal opinions of short stories impact my enjoyment of this however i feel like like it's definitely hard not to because I just don't enjoy short stories. I don't like the fact that things are over so quickly. We don't get that deep dive and complexity to the mystery and the different characters and things like that. So that is definitely something that is lacking in this book. Obviously I didn't know it was a short story collection before picking it up. Maybe if I did I would have given it a miss. But it is the next power book that I needed to read so that is why I have decided to listen to it but at the minute it's about a two maybe a three star and I'm not too sure if that rating will change but you never know we'll see I'm hoping that I can finish it tomorrow which is Sunday now again I haven't updated you guys for a while because I've just had the busiest week but yeah this is one that could have been left unread and I would have been okay with it, but since I have started to read it, I am just gonna finish it off. And then going back to a slightly more positive note, we have Survived the Night. Now I am gonna have to kind of wrap up my thoughts pretty quickly because the battery has started flashing at me, which is typical, but I have actually just sat down and read about 200 pages in one sitting. So I've made it to page, what was it? 226. So I am about halfway, maybe even more, definitely more than halfway actually. I've got this much to go. And I wasn't sure guys, I wasn't sure. I started reading this yesterday and I just couldn't quite get into it. However, I am so glad that I managed to sit down and dedicate some time to read today because as I mentioned, I've read 200 pages in one sitting and I am so into this story. I honestly have no idea what is actually going on at the minute, but as you know, we do have a group of friends who decided to go on a road trip together in an RV. They took one wrong turn along the way and ended up kind of stranded in the middle of nowhere nowhere and unfortunately there was someone waiting for them. It isn't quite explained how that has actually happened because as I mentioned they took a wrong turn so I'm not sure how this person could have planned for that. That's the only issue I have with this book so far. Maybe that will be revealed, I don't know, but this person who is waiting for them has planned everything essentially. They have made sure that this group is in a remote place with no cell phone service and they have actually also slashed the tires of the RV. So the group are literally stuck in the middle of nowhere and the person who is stalking them has revealed that one of them has a secret that they must reveal to the whole group and to the shooter themselves. Of course we don't know who has this secret, I guess that's gonna be something that is revealed along the way but it is very tense. There have been a few murders which I of course won't spoil for you guys but it was definitely hard hitting and yeah, I'm just loving this one so, so much right now. So I do think that I'm going to carry on reading this one tonight. I definitely think I will finish it tomorrow so I can sit down properly and give you guys my full thoughts then. I am sorry that this part has been very rushed, but as I mentioned, battery is flashing. So I do really need to be short and concise here. But yeah, I am loving this one. It's such a good book and I'm so excited to see how this all plays out. So I'm going to carry on reading this one now. Hopefully I can get to page about 300 which leaves me with about 100 pages to go tomorrow. And yeah, I guess I'll sit down and chat to you guys then. What is going on here, you guys? This book 
is insane, right? So I'm currently using a scrunchie as a bookmark, don't ask me why, but I'm on page 321 and honestly, this is such a wild ride. It's one of these where one minute it's pointed towards one person and the suspicion is all around them. Next minute you find out it's not actually that person so it could be this person. And things have just escalated, honestly, from zero to 100 so, so quick. There is one character in here that I just completely dislike. I think he is such an unlikable character. Not gonna name any names, don't worry. But, oh, I just, mm. He really does irk me and I just think if I was in that situation, <laughs> we would definitely not see eye to eye. He just likes to take initiative, he thinks that he is the best and that everyone should follow him, however, none of his ideas have worked and it's put everyone else in danger except for him. So, he's one of those people but something has just happened that has had my heart racing and I honestly just want to sit down and power through this book now. I only have about 100 pages to go, maybe even less than that, let me check. Oh, less than that. Okay, this book only has 389 pages. So I'm getting super, super close to the end and Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly have no idea how it's going to wrap up. I don't know who has the secret that is relevant even now. I feel like I do, but then I, I also feel like I'm wrong because something has just happened to the character that I feel like it is. And that's just confused everything for me now. So I don't actually know. This is so good though. Like I have literally read this entire book almost and I will have read it in its entirety this weekend, which is just insane to me. But I'm so, so happy that I am enjoying it so much because yeah, I was a little bit apprehensive, especially with how this book started off. I was just a bit like, oh, I don't know if this is for me. It's a little bit slow. I'm not really vibing with some of the characters. And now that we're fully into the action, I'm just like, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, Holly Jackson has done it again. Loving this book so far. The only thing that can let it down now is the ending. You guys know that thriller endings for me tend to be quite disappointing. And with only about 60 pages left, I am a little bit worried that this is going to wrap up very quickly. So hopefully we get some sort of resolution from it. I don't really want to be wanting more if that makes sense but I genuinely have no idea how this is all gonna pan out now especially in 60 pages so yeah I'm just desperate to finish this now however I can't do that just yet because I'm actually going to play some badminton in a minute I do go every Sunday with Tom Adriana and Sean and we're actually going later today so normally we would go around nine o'clock in the morning but unfortunately that slot was unavailable today so we are going at five o'clock instead which is definitely Definitely weird because normally we just wake up on a Sunday and go and then it's done and I feel very productive for the day however today has been a strange one I have managed to film two videos which is good but I'm not sure if they're gonna turn out great because I feel like I was just stumbling over my words a lot and then I took Kiwi for a walk which is why I look a bit flushed and disheveled now and yeah now we're gonna go and play some badminton so I do have to put the book down which oh is just really difficult right now but as as soon as I get back I'm going to have a shower, make some tea and then I'm going to sit down and finish this book. I was meant to do some prep work for school however this book has taken priority. I just need to finish it and then after that I can start what I need to for work. Here comes Kiwi. I'm just going to move my tea out of the way because she is definitely going to knock that. Are you going to say hi to everyone? Hello! <laughs> oh thank you lovely. <laughs> Honestly, she loves the weekend when we're home and then I feel really bad when we do leave her But we've got to keep fit, you know, and badminton is actually so much fun We have been doing it now for about a month and it's just such a good way to get moving It's a laugh. We always have such a good time and yeah, I can't wait to go tonight So I unfortunately can't read more before then I haven't read any more of Pyro Investigates either or listened to I should say So that probably won't get finished until tomorrow now because I don't plan on listening to it tonight to be completely honest with you of course i am going to be prioritizing five survive and then as i mentioned i have some schoolwork to do so 
yes that is the plan for tonight and I might not update you later on then I might update you once I've actually finished both books so that I can wrap up this vlog I'm not quite sure how long it is to be honest with you so I don't want to make it too long because I know that people do tend to lose interest even though I do like a longer vlog but yeah I'm heading off now once I finish my tea and I will chat to you guys later because I genuinely feel like I've just been a rumbling mess because yeah this book is doing things to me you guys and I just need to finish it so I will chat to you guys as soon as I have finished it and hopefully I only have good things to say Right guys, once again it is a few days later now, but I am here to wrap up this vlog. Please do excuse the state of me though, I had an allergic reaction this morning and I had a rash all over my face, so I have opted for the no makeup look today. But moving on to the books, I guess I'll start with the disappointing one first and you guys know this is coming. It is Poirot Investigates by Agatha Christie. I think I'm gonna give this one two stars, which Oh, it's my heart because I never thought I would give an Agatha Christie book two stars. However, I just really wasn't having a good time with this one. It's the reason that I'm now wrapping up this vlog so late. I just haven't been wanting to listen to it or read it. And so I have been putting it off, but I decided that I had to finish it today so that this vlog can go up tomorrow. So I did that and yeah, unfortunately it was just not for me. I've mentioned throughout this video that I just don't enjoy short stories. I don't think you get the complex of a standard novel in these pages everything happens so quickly and if you miss one thing then you're kind of confused for the rest of it so yeah I just didn't gel with this one unfortunately maybe if I picked them up here and there I would have enjoyed them a lot more but I did just find them quite confusing and I feel like I didn't really get a lot out of this book I feel like I missed a lot of the plots of these short stories and so yeah unfortunately this book wasn't for me however I may go back to it in the future it is a part of my collection but it has definitely not been an enjoyable experience for me this time around which is such a shame but yeah you can't love every book unfortunately and this one was a massive letdown so it is a two star read for me hopefully the next pair of book will be a whole lot better and it definitely should be because that one is going to be the murder of Roger Ackroyd which is one of Agatha Christie's most famous works so I am super excited for that but I am gonna give it a chunk of time now where I step away from Agatha Christie books because I have read three so far in January which my goal was one a month so I've definitely smashed that this first month but I think I need to take a step back for a week or two before picking up my next one because yeah this has just not been a good one for me and I don't want to be in a negative space going into the next book so that is the plan for that one it is on my February TBR and I am hoping that I can give you guys a more positive review for that book once I do read it on a more positive note though I finished Five Survive I finished it on the 
nights that I played badminton. You will have seen that clip, I'm not sure if I filmed my whole reaction to finishing it, I can't quite remember, but oh my goodness. This was a roller coaster of emotions, guys. I was just blown away by every single thing. There were so many different reveals and there were so many different layers to it that as soon as you kind of think you've got everything figured out, something happens to prove that you haven't and it just throws you in a completely different direction and yeah, that was just exactly what I needed. I read this whole book in a weekend, I think. Tom even commented on that fact. He was like, oh my gosh, you've almost finished that book and you've just started it. And I was like, yes, I feel so proud. I haven't done that in the longest time. So yeah, I'm very, very glad that I enjoyed this one. It's a five star. This is the first five star of the year actually. And I just think that's so fitting. I loved the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy by Holly Jackson. I have read this one now and loved it. And I genuinely cannot wait for her next book, which is definitely not coming out anytime soon. I'm not sure if she's even planning another book, but if it is announced, I will be pre-ordering it straight away because Holly Jackson is an autobiography author for me now. She is a favourite author of mine and I'm just so glad that I read this book at the start of the year and that it's kind of set the year off on a good note for me. And it was definitely what I needed to kind of get back into my reading gear. So thank you so, so much Holly Jackson for this amazing book. If you haven't been able to tell throughout this whole video, I have loved this one. It is a phenomenal book. Please do pick it up even if you don't tell to read YA. I haven't read a YA book for a while now but I do love YA thrillers. I think that they are easy to fall into. You kind of get swept up in it so so quickly. It's so dramatic which I love and yeah we have a really good group of characters in here. They all tug on different emotions which is really clever because as I mentioned I hated one of the characters in here. Another one got on my nerves a little bit for different reasons. I loved another one <laughs> because of how carefree he is. There was a different one where I was just a bit suspicious of and there were one or two that I just thought were lovely and then boom big reveals everything changes and I'm left speechless so yeah this was fantastic didn't get the major plot twist at the end it also wrapped up really satisfyingly I think it could lead on to another book but I'm so so happy with this as an ending it does kind of leave it not open-ended but there is something else that could potentially be happening and I just yeah I just think it worked really well so if you want a good YA thriller then this is your book so there we have it a bit of a weird one this week we had a five star book and a two star book but I am happy that I read both of them mainly because I can forget about this one now and move on to the next power book and five survive is sure to be a new favorite so yeah very very happy that I did manage to get to these two it is currently the 31st of January January. You can tell how long I've been filming this vlog for. It's been about two weeks, two and a half weeks maybe. So I am really sorry about that. My reading vlogs will probably come out every two weeks just because of the pace that I'm reading and just because I have been going through a weird patch at the minute where I've just not been wanting to put myself on camera. So like tonight I've had to kind of force myself to come on camera because I was feeling really low in my appearance but I was just like you know what reading vlogs are chilled. It's fine. Just film. You need to get it up so just do it and I'm so so glad that I have to actually but I do need to try and figure out some sort of schedule to make sure that I do update you guys more often because yeah I just feel like these vlogs are a bit all over the place and they do take place over one to two weeks so I'm very very sorry about that but it's just because of so many different life things that are going on at the minute and I hope you guys understand. Hopefully once I get out of my reading slump a bit more then these vlogs will be more frequent but I'm pretty happy with one every two weeks and if I do read more of course I will post them weekly so yeah I'm very excited to start my books for February. I am at Actually currently reading the Peter Jackson book which I can't remember the title of now I feel so bad I think it's anything you can imagine Peter Jackson and the making of Middle Earth I think that's the full title but it is currently downstairs I am about 180 pages into that one so far but I am gonna carry it over into February of course I'm no way gonna finish that book today so that is going to be in my next reading vlog I haven't decided on the second book yet though so keep your eyes peeled and yeah I'm just having a really good time reading at the minute and I am actually so glad because yeah last year just felt so strange to me. I fell out of love with 
with reading. I wasn't really inspired to make content. However, now I've kind of got my reading mojo back and because of that, it allows me to create more videos for you guys as well. So yeah, sorry about that little tangent there, guys, but it's just something that I have wanted to address. I am gonna end this video here though because at this point, I think it's about 20, 25 minutes long. So I'm not gonna keep you guys any longer, but if you have made it this far into the video and would like to let me know that you're still here, please go ahead and leave me a yellow emoji of your choice. Now we know that this book is just the brightest thing. It is completely yellow if I take the dust jacket off except for this and this, but we're gonna ignore that. So yeah, for my new favorite book, please do leave me some yellow emojis if you have made it this far. I say it all the time, but seeing you guys comment the emoji of the video truly does mean the world to me. So if you don't have anything in particular that you would like to say, but you would like to let me know that you're still here, definitely go ahead and do that now. As well as that, please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. It truly does mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!